financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Good morning. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. You know, it took me a second to decide what I wanted to cover today, but we've gone past October 15th, which is the second deadline after the extensions, so I thought it would be a good time to talk about tax problems. We have Jenny Lingle back with us again after a couple weeks off. Good morning, Jen Ken. Good morning, Jenny. Glad we're here to talk about my favorite topic today. Taxes. David Einstandig. Ken, it's always a pleasure to share the desk with you. And Brian Small. Hey, Ken, how Hi, are you? Brian. You know, I tell you something. I was a little worried when you started talking about extensions. All I could think of was hair extensions, and I figured that would be a real problem for me. It would definitely be a problem for you. And we're still trying to work through the fact that you have a face for radio, but we're getting there. Now that I've got that out of the thank way. You, thank you, thank Here's you. Here's so the much. subject. I have a tax problem and I don't know what to do. Call Jenny. The first thing I thought about when I was prepping for the show today is I said, I wonder what Google would say if I said, what are the most common tax problems? You would think you would have a zillion hits. When was the last time you searched something you didn't use Google? I always use Google. I mean, how many years? I, every once in a while, I'll go to Yahoo or uh, some You go else. to Yahoo. Yeah, you know what you should have done? You should have gone to Wikipedia, maybe. If you'd ask your phone, you would have spent, you would have saved yourself so much extra time. If I what? If you ask Siri on your phone. Yes. Is she more Siri, accurate than Google? Siri and I do not have a good relationship. I'm trying to repair it, but I stepped over the bounds with my iPhone 4, and since then she wouldn't talk to me during the iPhone 5. I now have a 6, and we're patching it up a little Wasn't bit. Wasn't there but a movie on that? I don't was. know. Yes. But we've got a long way to go. <laughs> So I googled common tax problems, expecting to see what we consider to be the common tax problems, because we know what they are. The closest thing I could get to an article that even addressed the issue was in supermoney.com, and these are the four most common tax problems they said. Tax return errors, tax audit, IRS errors, and tax collection. Problem, well, problems for who? Problems for the individual? Problems for the IRS? These are problems, but when we talk about problems for people in terms of tax problems, I didn't see it that way, and I'm sure you don't either, Jenny. Here's, here's what I see as the four real tax problems that are out there, the common ones, and you, you know, pop in there if you, if you disagree. One, I have not filed my return. Number two, I don't have the money to pay the tax. Number three, crisis, calling Jenny, calling Brian, calling David. IRS just levied on my wages. I don't have any food to eat. What do I do? And the fourth one, very similar to that, is IRS just raided my bank account and I have no money. To me, those are the four common crisis tax problems. I think what they were doing there is I think that your four are all included in their number four, which is tax collection problems. Yeah, they're uh, just a pro little vague. Probably so. <laughs> Maybe they're just being a little bit too broad scoped in the in, in, in the thing. Yeah, and audit is a problem if you get audited, but audits but are, are there's not There's also that a number five. These are crises. There's a number five. Yes, crises. there is now. What's your number five? The amount. By, but what I mean on the amount is that so many people, if they would actually get their return done properly, would, 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 would figure out that they, their liability, A, is not as bad oh, as it is, yeah. B, improper there's a ton of deductions that they're not taking, improper yeah. preparation, which probably could, which, which would likely lead uh, to many uh, so individuals that, as less problems down the road. Maybe that goes to return errors when they said that, because it wasn't just, the return errors in the article wasn't just referring to IRS calculation errors, but that was one, that was actually probably Okay, there's three. four, but aren't but they weighted? But, no, no, but it, I want to go back to my four problems. I, I think I your four I, problems can be summarized in one problem. I don't want you to do that. Not allowed. Please don't do no that. No summarizing. Because what I want to do <laughs> is cover the material we that we're will. covering in but the show. But it's all about burying your head in the sand. 
Oh, you're going to give the Barry in the Head in the Sand speech? Go ahead. I'm just Take saying. 30 seconds. If give you... us the Barry in the Head, Barry the Head in the Sand speech. Go on, Brian. Go ahead. Give us a speech, and then we're going to do what we're supposed to do on the show today. That's fine. What's the, give us if a speech. If you bury your head in the sand and ignore all of these problems, there's only one way to escape the IRS eventually if you ignore the problems. What's that? It's a pine box. Well, without being too coy, that problem escapes is a way of escaping all problems. And eventually, we all get there. But if you want to avoid you the You may pine get box, there sooner yeah. if you keep interrupting if, the flow if, if, of the if show. If the pine box isn't the If the four of us had to you. bury our head in the sand, I think yours would be the quickest and slickest for obvious reasons. <laughs> I would bury his head <laughs> in the sand. He's, he's got himself. no friction. If right. you all right, let's move want on. to avoid the I, pine box solution, point, point then well let's taken. deal with each right. individual problem and show the, our and audience let's, what let's, we can do to fix the problem. I've not filed my tax returns. Background, the law mandates that you file. It's a crime not. Jenny, what's the penalty for failing to file the tax return? Well, when you don't file your tax return, you are first going to get hit with a failure to file penalty and then the failure to pay penalty. And both of those can add up to almost 50% of the unpaid tax. We're, so we're, not filing can be up to 25%. And that's the most stupid one to incur. because and, and it goes fast. It's 5% a month, bang. Five months, 25%. There's no penalty on failing to file the return if you file the return on time. Isn't you the struggle? The return, then all you have is the failure the to pay. Well, well, hold on. Isn't the struggle that the individual is saying, you know what, if I file, because I know I don't have that kind of money. I don't have 10 grand. I don't have 15, 20, whatever it is. If I file, that puts me on the radar. That makes things, everything coming to me quicker. And I'm better off. I'm better off if I just... Hold on yeah, and you, wait a couple months. Th th there's a significant problem with all of that. Failure to file your tax return is a criminal act. It is called tax evasion. That's, that's, that, that's another problem that goes with it. And on wait top of that, and Jenny, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jenny, speeding is a criminal act. Sometimes people make decisions it's and a there's felony. a risk. It's a felony. And what I'm saying it's is... Not a, it's never a smart risk. The person who's delaying because they don't have the money is it's, not necessarily taking that into account, but it's a real fact. I, agree. I think if you're delaying, I think what you need to do is contact a professional and find out what you're really up against. Most people, after they leave my office, say, I wish I would have come to you sooner. And, uh, and, and the other point of what you're saying, and we're coming up to a break, is eventually it's going to come up and hit you. You can't avoid it forever, and if that's the case, all you're doing is potentially subjecting yourself to criminal action. You're letting the problem get further and further behind, and you're also locking yourself into that 25% penalty that you could have avoided. When we come back from the break, the next question is the guy comes to Jenny and says, I haven't filed for five years. I don't know where my records are. I don't know what to do. How do I take care of doing that return? What do you do in that situation? How, how do you figure out how to prepare the return? That's the big question. When we come up to the, after the break, Jenny's going to answer it. It's devastating, the effects of debt and foreclosure on you and your family. There is a solution. Worth Thav Gross, our firm will solve your problem. Some fear the word bankruptcy, but in reality, it's a strategy to save your home and to eliminate debt. If you're in financial trouble, timing is critical. You need to take action now. We've been saving homes and eliminating debt for over 33 years. Call Fav Gross, 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Fav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, 
dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fab Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. I welcome back. So, Jenny, here's the situation. I haven't filed, let's do me. I haven't filed my returns okay. in seven years. My records are in the garage, boxes all over the place. <laughs> yes, it is <laughs> hypothetical. I don't know what to do. How, can, how do you help me file my returns? Well, the first thing I do is I'll get a power of attorney um, for you, and I'll go into the IRS's, what they call e-services system, and I'll pull the transcripts. What I'll look for first is the account transcripts to verify when the last year was that you actually filed a return. From there, we'll pull the wage and income transcripts for the remaining years. And what those will show is any W-2s or 1099 or interest statements that were reported under your Social Security So number. you'll get my income by doing that. We'll get your income. And then what you have to do, unfortunately, this ha is harder for self-employed individuals, is we'll take a look and make a good faith uh, effort to estimate what your expenses should have been for those years. And I could go back to my mortgage company and get my mortgage statement well, if I had a house. Well, your mortgage statement will, will, will show up, but your property my taxes property taxes will not I could, show up. But I could get that from the city. Correct. There's the certain things we can do and where you can get them. Unfortunately, I can't recreate your mileage log for you, but we can take a look at industry right. standard in prior years. So if you don't have the exact numbers, is it our, is it illegal to estimate, or can you do your best estimate you and get the return done? You have to do a good faith estimate. Actually, You're it's, it's, more, than, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's not that it's illegal, it's the inverse. It is your obligation to do the best you can. Everyone's got to file a return. Every U.S. citizen over a certain amount of income has to file. All they need to do is, the, is, is the make a good faith effort. If you don't have a single piece of paper through proper discussions and planning, a little bit of investigation, you can do enough to satisfy that requirement, but you just need somebody to guide you through that process. Well, okay, so here, Jenny, so Jenny, let, you, let, you, I, I want to move on. But let, me, let me bottom line it. Is, it's not a reason to not file your returns because you, you're worried about where the information is. You can get the income information from the government, the W-2s, the 1099s, then you estimate and do the best you can. You get the returns filed, and then you can sleep at night. Okay? Let's go on to number two. And, and Brian, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you, I'm sure you'll have a lot to say on number two. I don't have the money to pay the tax. So what do you do in that situation? Well, the first thing we do is make sure that you have filed all of your returns. The second thing we do is make sure that you are compliant in the current year. Because the IRS, when they're going to look at whether you qualify for a collection alternative, which I'll get to in a second, is going to make sure that even though they're willing to work with you on the back, that the problem is not snowballing going forward. So you forward. make sure that I'm filed for my current year and that I'm paying in. If I'm an employee, yeah. I've got withholding. Correct. Some people need to adjust their W-4 to have more withholding. Some people need to start making estimates. Then what we do is we sit down and I go through what your income is and what your expenses are and what your allowable expenses are. From there, we can determine whether you qualify for an installment agreement based on ability to pay. Well, I don't, wait, installment agreement, I hear on the TV all the time, you can settle your debt for pennies on the dollar. There's a Fresh Start program. What is the Fresh? Is, uh, I, I would like to apply for the Fresh Start program. Is there a Fresh Start program that you can that, that you can sign up for? Well, what the Fresh Start program? Do you like go is? to a like a, a school and sign up in <laughs> line and get for the Fresh Start? No. No. Just you. That's, the commercials have it. <laughs> I know. Fresh they, Start program. They make it these famous them. guys on the radio that have been like with the Partridge Family or something talk about Fresh Starts. Well, they make it sound a little more interesting they than it, it is. Three times fast. No. <laughs> what is it? Well, what the are they first thing about? is, is that they changed the threshold for streamlined agreements. It used to be that if you owe twenty-five thousand dollars or less, you could do a sixty-month payment plan as long as it would pay it in full. They raised that threshold to fifty thousand dollars. You can do it 
I'm 72 months now. So that's an installment payment. It's an installment payment, and, and that way you but don't have to get into your But what about this pennies asset. on the dollar well, stuff? What's that about? Well, that's what we're about? getting to. We go through, when I look at it, the first thing I start with is income and expenses. And I figure out what you can afford to pay on a monthly basis. Why that component is important is if we're going to look at an offer and compromise, there's a few things that go into it. First, they're going to look at what your income is after... Right, you you're, 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 you're confusing me a little bit. So we're talking about... The idea of so, of settling the tax debt for pennies on the dollars is an offering compromise. That's correct. So it's a situation where you offer a certain amount of money, say I offer five thousand dollars to settle my hundred thousand dollar tax debt, and how, how do you and, and the, what's the method by which that's evaluated? There is a method. It is all a math based formula. So the biggest mistake people are falling into right now is they're calling these 1-800 numbers who are making it sound like a negotiation and then it's a certain percentage of what you owe. I'll give you $4,000. When I count it. And a bushel of hay. That's. It's pretty much <laughs> comes down to many. Or three burgers and well, fries. Well, what we do is it's a math formula based on your current income and your allowable expenses. If you've got $100 left after that, I take $100 and I multiply that by 12 and it becomes $1,200 is the bottom of your offer. Then I look at whether you've got a 401k, an IRA, what stocks What screws and bounds. up the deals? What I've heard from myself from on this show in previous <laughs> episodes is that if I have a bunch of equity in my house and I have $100,000 in my 401k, they're going to take that money they're not going to just let me off the hook for $5,000. That's correct. Basically what they're going to they're going to look at is about 70% of what's in your 401k if you're allowed to, to allow take the them other 30% to pay the tax. To pay the current so taxes. Then, so then all right, so if you if you look at all these things and if I have it all, why don't I just give it away? And then I'll do my offer and compromise. Well, then it becomes what they call a dissipated asset. What they want to do is they've that's said... That's a real <laughs> tricky idea, but it doesn't work, <laughs> but Brian. But people thought of that before. So that's where they came up with dissipated assets. You can't just go and get rid of all of your assets, give everything away, and then come and, and they claim They take broke. all the fun away. They so, will take a look at it, and they'll say, you know what? You dissipated these assets. You gave them away. You should have paid us. We're going to pretend you have it now. We'll so you still have to it. give them the money that re was represented by those assets. Well, they're going to calculate how much you can afford to pay based yeah. on what what those assets right, so were. So let me switch gears. Brian, there's also a way of bank of discharging ta income taxes in bankruptcy. Absolutely. How does, now, when you call the 1-800 tax relief guy who's some cartoon character <laughs> claiming that he's going to settle your taxes for pennies on the dollar, he doesn't even know about the bankruptcy laws because he's not a bankruptcy attorney. He does attorney. not do the full analysis of well, what he should you, be looking when at. When you're looking at discharging taxes in a bankruptcy, the rules are really simple. Did the tax come due? I hope due they are, because we're coming up to a break. Did the tax come due more than three years ago? Had the taxes been filed for more, at least two years? Filed. Filed. Okay. And has the have you been assessed in the last 240 days? If none of those things have happened, you're stuck. But if they came due more than three years ago, they're filed more than two years ago, and you haven't been assessed in 240 days, ostensibly the tax is dischargeable. In a bankruptcy. So if I filed the return, I'm okay. But if I didn't file the return, like we were talking about before, and IRS filed the return for That's me. That's called a substitute for return that is never dischargeable in bankruptcy. So we should probably come up with new definition of SFR for substitute for return and as to how it works. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Samasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, 
Samasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Favgro specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Fav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Fav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Now, I know everybody enjoyed my SFR comment right as it came up to the break, but what I was getting at was what would be a, a, an expression better than substitute for return and Brian, what'd you come up with? Stuck forever. Stuck forever. Okay, there we go. The whole point being is it's incumbent slim. <laughs> slim to or file slick. your tax returns, <laughs> not only so that you're complying with the law, not only so you can sleep at night, but maybe down the road you can discharge the taxes with Brian in a bankruptcy. So you'd file the bankruptcy if they met your three-year, two-year, two 240 rule. Correct. And the taxes liability would be gone. Yes, if they came do more than three years ago, et cetera, Yeah, if you met yes. the rule. However, it's only if you qualify for the Chapter 7 otherwise. Yeah, so you otherwise have to fit within Chapter 7. If right? not, but we're not, we this can is work, a, but if not, this is not going to be a Chapter 7 day, I know Brian. that, but if not, we can work with the taxpayer in Chapter 13 also. Correct, and you can also look back to an offer and compromise and installment agreement. So to summarize on, I don't have the money to pay the taxes. Maybe you can fit within an offer and compromise if you meet the criteria. Maybe you can discharge the taxes in bankruptcy, which is even a better deal, because under the offer and compromise, you have to stay clean for five years. Otherwise, they take away the... are off. They take it off they and reinstate the that's liability. That's a big burden on people. And then the third thing is you can get an installment payment. Now, I want to give a, I want a quick announcement in terms of we've got a seminar coming up, but then after this talk about the seminar, Jenny... People get levied on their wages and their assets. When we come back on this issue, I need you to explain what do you do in that situation to get rid of the levy and get your money back? Because that's a big problem for people, and we see that all the time. Announcements. We've got a seminar coming up on how to eliminate debt and build savings for retirement. It's Wednesday, November 4th. I'll tell you right now, it's filling up very rapidly. It's a free seminar at our offices in Bingham Farms. 7 to 8.30 p.m. You attend, you get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. It's how to eliminate debt, not just to get rid of the debt. It, the whole concept is preserve future income for you and your family so you have something to retire with down the road. All the tricks of the trade that we have, all the strategies that we talk about on the show, 7 to 8.30 p.m., sign up for it at lawnreality.com or call... What's the best part of it? 888-235-HELP. What's the best part of the whole seminar? Free yeah. bottle of water. Free seminar. Free seminar. Free seminar. There oh. you go. Free tickets. Listen, free and of Flint, water, that would be a big deal. Of your book. Yeah, and and don't come expecting you know a steak dinner to go with it. You know, maybe we'll come up with some cookies this time. But it's an informative seminar. We go through a tremendous no amount of material. People like it. People take advantage of it. You should you should do the same. I want to thank our sponsors, Samasco Law and Thav Gross. Now, Jenny, back to all of a sudden, someone calls you up. They're stressed out. They got a notice in the mail. Their tax, their IRS has levied on their wages. They're okay. only how much are they going to get? They're going to take substantially all of the wages. Uh, they only have to leave them with enough for one exemption, which may be approximately about three hundred dollars a month. So if you got a family of four and your paycheck is uh, your net paycheck is fourteen hundred dollars. You're probably going to be left at the end of the month with about three hundred dollars, sometimes less than how, that. How do I what feed my kind family? of government would do that? To how you? do I feed my family? How do the I pay my The reason that mortgage, they issue the levies is to, is to get your attention. To get your attention. Hold on, exactly. Let's talk, let's to talk play Turkey. devil's advocate, talk, you've gotten a lot of notices that you've okay. ignored. Let's be practical, though. You get a phone call, fourteen hundred dollar 
uh, uh, check is It's going to happen completed. every week, though. It's going to keep it's happening. It's completely gone. Mortgage has to be paid next yeah. week. What? How do you handle that so they don't go into a default on the mortgage, and et cetera? Well, it's a tricky question because there's a lot of different scenarios, but it, the person that is in the best position for me to be able to get that levy released quickly would be someone who is current with filing their tax returns. Okay, so if they're not, they have to get current you fast? You have to get current. unless sometimes, That doesn't mean you have to pay everything. No, you just have just to file. file. Now, if you're assigned to a revenue officer, sometimes we can work things out in which they release the levy and we set additional deadlines. What do you mean assigned to a revenue officer? Uh, some, some of my clients are in what they call automated collection services. Services, which That's like a computer? It's like a computer. The levy came from the computer. Is that like Siri? <laughs> Pretty much. Other people are assigned to an actual person who you can talk to and reason with. So on the one side, if you're with collections, if you owe less than $50,000, sometimes what we try to do if you're current is call in and set up a streamlined payment agreement, agree to it, give them the fax number to release the levy, even if that streamlined agreement is not our Can end you game. usually get the levy released and get their wages back in order or get and get their bank account money back? The majority of the time, I can. There are a lot of different procedures. If you're with a revenue officer and sometimes your revenue officer is really unreasonable, the first thing I do is file a, a collection appeal right in the cost of management conference. Sometimes that just a adi little additional pressure um, will get us some time where they'll say, okay, let's come back to the table and set some deadlines. And if you don't meet these deadlines, we're going to reissue. How it. hard would that be to do it yourself? It's extremely difficult because it's kind of like walking through a minefield. You really have to know what the procedures are, who to go to, you're all, where to go if you get in trouble. And I also think you're in panic mode at that point. If all of a sudden they've taken the money out of your bank account or they've taken your paycheck, I mean, just be practical. If it was me or any of us, we would be in panic mode even if we knew how to contact the IRS. You need someone to help you that can work through the minefield, sort it out, and get it done. But it's, is, is it it's not that impossible to do? It's absolutely not impossible. Of course, it becomes more difficult, and this is why it's important to file if you're looked at as egregious, an egregious taxpayer, someone who hasn't filed in the last 10 years, uh, hasn't made any payments, then it's harder to get them to sympathize with you. But you How get the returns filed right away? If we get the returns filed right away, we get a collection um, alternative request put in. I'm pretty successful in getting those levy released. And, and, here, and, here's and when why. you come in and talk to me, right. usually once I look at your situation, I can actually tell you whether it's something we're going to be able to right. get released. But or Ken, here's be why: problems. because the the and report, the report that Jenny, the report this. that Jenny has with these revenue officers and our firm does is we can always say, hey, our client has not uh, filed in X number of years. We're getting them on track. We have a trust, we have a rapport, we start the process immediately. That in and of itself will get the levy released. All right, let me wrap this up, okay? The important thing on a levy is you need to take action. If you sit back, they're just going to take the wages and it's going to be gone. You need to get in, you need, to, you need someone like Jenny Wingle to take care of the problem. She knows how to handle that thing. You don't call 1-800-SAN-FRANCISCO and give them a credit card and think that they're going to really worry about you. You sit face to face with the person who's going to help you and you make sure that that person's vested in your outcome. That's for the levy. If you owe the taxes, you look at Brian, we look at it, we say maybe bankruptcy, maybe an offering compromise, maybe an installment plan. The important thing that people need to know is you have options and there are solutions. And that's what you need to look for.